Rural and Urban Livelihood Introduction We can see many diversities in our lives. We can see how living in different regions have an effect on the work people do. There are different ways in which people earn their livelihood in villages. But in bigger towns and cities, people have more opportunities. It has more than million people living and working here. Every citizen needs to take part in the activities that take place in our families, neighborhood, schools, society, etc. Social life is not possible without cooperation. Cooperation helps individuals to make progress. Everywhere, whether in urban or in rural areas, we find people doing one job or the other in order to make both ends meet. Our society. In the primitive age, man lived a nomadic life and roamed around in search of food and shelter. Gradually, he started cultivating food and tried to live a settled life at a fixed place. With the passage of time, the concept of village came up. Now, man lived a settled life and pursued other occupations as he now lived in a community. Rural Livelihood Almost 70% of our population lives in villages. People who live in villages are called rural people. Various types of people live in a village and do many kinds of works to earn their livelihood. The primary occupation of the villagers is agriculture, fishing, dairying and animal husbandry. However, the main occupation of the rural people is agriculture. Depending upon the size of their land holdings, farmers can be grouped as large-scale farmers, middle-scale farmers, small-scale farmers and landless farmers. Large-scale farmers usually have large areas of land under cultivation. They use modern methods of agriculture like high-quality seeds, fertilizers and modern agricultural implements. They also have better provision for irrigation. They produce enough crops and a large part of it is sold in the market after fulfilling their own needs. Many of them have other income also, such as from business and from other profession. The second category consists of the middle-scale farmers. They have their own land between 2 to 5 hectares. They themselves, along with their families, work in their farms and grow crops. Usually, they adopt old methods of farming and equipments. They produce barely enough crops to sustain their families throughout the year. This type of farming is known as subsistence farming. Almost 30% of farmers in our country belong to this category. The third group of farmers is of small-scale farmers. Their income from farming is so low that they themselves or their family members are compelled to work as agricultural labourers in the fields of big or middle class farmers. Sometimes they even leave their villages and go to the nearby towns to earn their livelihood. In lieu of their hard work, they receive their wages in cash or sometimes in grains also. The condition of the landless farmer is the most pathetic. They have no land of their own and they are entirely dependent upon the big and middle class farmers for their sustenance. They find job in the village for a few months only and for the rest of the period of the year, they migrate to some nearby towns in search of jobs. Occupations in Villages Grocer Some villagers open small shops in their houses and earn their livelihood. They sell different items of daily use such as food items, vegetables, stationery, etc. They are an important part of the village as people can buy articles of their daily needs from them. Dairy Products Cattle farming and dairy farming are also an important means of livelihood in rural India. Many villages rear livestock like cows, buffaloes, and supply milk and milk products like butter, ghee, cheese, cream, etc. not only in the village but also to the nearby towns and cities. Goats and camels are also reared for their commercial value and poultry farm 
and pig rearing are also common in villages. Fishery People in coastal states have fish as their main diet. Many people are engaged in fishing business. They catch fish in the sea and sell them to villages, towns and cities. Some kinds of fish are even exported to foreign countries, making it a very profitable business. Fish are reared in village ponds and rivers. Carpentry The carpenters play an important role in the village livelihood. They make wooden furniture such as doors, windows, chairs, tables, etc. for the villagers. They also sell them in the village fairs and to the nearby towns and cities. Blacksmith Usually, there is a blacksmith family in every village. They make tools and other agricultural equipments for the farmers. Sometimes, they employ an assistant, but mostly their family members assist them in their jobs. Other Occupations There are some other people like Masons, potters, barbers, cobblers, weavers, tailors, etc. who earn their livelihood by practicing their trades. They are also an important part of the village society. The rural people are also skilled in metalworks and designing statues from wood, stone and metal. The government is also encouraging those rural craftsmen by providing loans and grants thus helping them to live a decent and honourable life. Urban Livelihood Urban livelihood is quite a part to that of rural livelihood. The reason behind it is that the urban surroundings are quite different from the rural ones. Moreover, the urban population is heterogeneous in nature because urban people come from different parts of the country. In urban areas, people are either self-employed or employed in government offices, multinational companies, banks, hospitals, educational institutes, or training and business concerns. Occupations in urban areas can broadly be divided into three main categories. Primary occupations, secondary occupations, and tertiary occupations. Primary occupations. Primary occupations are those in which People are engaged in deriving useful goods from natural resources like agriculture, forestry, fishing, cattle rearing, etc. Secondary Occupations In secondary occupations, people are involved in processing of raw material obtained from different sources into utility goods either by hand or with the help of machines. Iron and steel industries, textile industries, Bakeries, leather industries, paper mills, etc. are examples of secondary occupations. Tertiary occupations. There are some occupations where no goods are produced, but people offer their services or expertise. Such occupations are called tertiary occupations. Examples of such occupations are banking, teaching, hospitals, railways, post offices, etc. Livelihood in cities and big towns In cities and towns, shopkeepers, businessmen, various professionals such as doctors, teachers, clerks, caterers, interior decorators, legal advisors, etc. practice their trade and occupation. Shops and industrial houses Many businessmen manage their shops and small industries. The owners of such shops and industries obtain license or permission from the government to do business. Many people are engaged in these shops and industries. Factory Workers There are big factories and industries in the outskirts of many cities and big towns. They provide employment to thousands of workers, supervisors and officers. Their services are permanent and cannot be terminated easily. They enjoy certain benefits and facilities like pension, gratuity, medical and insurance facilities and paid annual leaves, etc. Government Jobs A large number of people are engaged in government jobs. They help in the running of the day-to-day -day administration. The central government employees are appointed either by the Union Public Service Commission, UPSC, 
or by various central authorities. The State Public Service Commission, which conducts various examinations from time to time, recruits the state government employees. They are also permanent employees and are entitled to all benefits like government accommodation, earned leaves, medical and insurance facilities, pensions, gratuity, etc. Casual Workers and Other Jobs Many people work as casual workers in various public and private departments. They are temporary workers and get work as and when their services are required. They have no job security and their services can be terminated at the discretion of the employer. There are also people working as domestic servants, rickshaw pullers, auto and truck drivers, etc. Call centers. Call centers have cropped up in big cities. Various companies are opening their call centers in big cities and towns to deal with the problems faced by customers and consumers all over the world and to apprise them of their new products and services. A call center is well equipped with computers and telephones and is linked with both the Indian and foreign companies. Those working at the call centers should be well versed in English language. Migration People migrate from rural areas to urban areas in search of better employment opportunities and for improving their standard of living. As a result of migration, population in big cities and towns is on the rise. Some other factors responsible for migration are lack of educational and medical facilities in villages, feelings of insecurity, poor conditions of employment and pay. But migration has certain advantages as well. Money earned by the migrant is sent to their families living in the villages. They are helpful for the people of town and cities in expanding and managing their businesses and increasing their production. Status of Women The status of women in urban areas is higher than that of women in rural areas. Urban women are comparatively more educated and liberal than their village counterparts. However, in the labour market, women are still in a disadvantageous situation. The labour market discriminates against women and is opposed to equality of opportunity. Women normally prefer teaching, nursing, social work, secretarial and clerical jobs, all of which have lower status and lower wages.